Hey there and welcome to Flearn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me at flearn.com where we make learning fun. In today's video, we're gonna show you the amazing power of the select and mask dialog. You can cut out your subject and refine the edge all in one place. So here's our sample image for today. We wanna to get our subject cut out really easy to do. Go ahead and click on your background layer. We're gonna to go to select and then down to select and mask. Let's go ahead and click there. Now, by default, I don't really see anything. I need to click on this select subject button right up here at the top. So let's go ahead and click on select subject and you can see, yeah, pretty good already. Now we're gonna to have to zoom in and take a look at different parts of our image where maybe it didn't do the perfect job. No big deal. So let's go ahead and give you a tour of this entire dialogue and show you how everything works. So we're gonna start off here on our properties in the very top right. You have a few different views you can look at. You can see the onion skin, which will be your image basically with the background on it. You can see marching ants, some dots, overlay on black, on white. Now these are not changing the selection itself. This just changes how you see the selection. So we're gonna keep this on onion skin to start with. I find this to be really helpful and you can just adjust your opacity to see the image versus the background. So as I change my transparency here, it gives me a really good preview of what the image actually looks like. Now, over here on the left-hand side, these are where your tools actually help you refine your edges. So this first tool will allow you to include or disclude any areas of your image. So let's go ahead and start there. I'm gonna click on this tool. Now with all of these tools here on the left, you have the ability to add or subtract from your edges. So in this case, I'm just gonna go to this subtract icon here and I'm gonna paint right over here where this little uh, area is in the background. And it just knows to reverse or remove that from my selection. So as I change my transparency, you can see, yep, it is in fact removed from that. Now this tool is smart in that it will actually just figure out where we wanna remove. For instance, if I paint over this area here, it'll just completely remove all of that area near there. So I can just simply click right here and it'll remove that area here. Click here on these different colors and it's gonna remove everything relatively similar. There we go. I can just click on this light area and you can see it does a pretty good job refining all those edges. We're gonna go over here to this blue and just say, hey, we don't need to include the blue. So you can see it's not only where I click, it's actually like getting information from around that image and basically saying, okay, cool. You don't want that blue to be visible. You don't want that orange to be visible. Cool, we'll just go ahead and get rid of all that blue in that area or all the orange in that area. There we go. And that's looking pretty good. Now we're gonna to start to just move around our image and change our transparency to see how we're looking. You can see we might need to do a little bit of cleanup here around the edge, but that's okay. We're gonna show you how to do that in just a second with our next tool. To start off with, I just wanna get a good sense of, hey, are we including or not including some of these important areas? Let's go ahead and add to our selection around the shirt area here. We just wanna make sure that it does include this shirt detail. There we go. And move down here. Let's go ahead and hit this minus icon and remove some of this area between our subject's fingers. And you can see, again, this tool is relatively smart. It does a lot of the work for you. You don't really have to do much here. If it <laughs> jumps too much, in this case, it removed his entire hands, you can just hit this plus icon and then go ahead and add. You just see painting right in over there on top of the fingers and it'll figure it out. It'll say, okay, cool. You want those fingers in this selection? Cool, we'll go ahead and put them back for you. So oftentimes it's not a huge deal if you don't get it perfectly right. And there are a lot of different ways to refine this within the same tool. Let's go ahead and move around. I just wanna get the big areas here. Uh, this area we wanna remove. So let's go ahead and use this minus icon and remove that. And you can see pretty quickly and pretty easily. All right, let's do minus this out too. There we go. Now we do have some cases where it just might not do the exact thing you want it to do. And that is where the next tool comes down. We're actually gonna skip one. But we're gonna go to this tool, the third down from the top, and this will simply allow you to add or remove to your selections completely manually, okay? So this is basically wherever I paint is going to be included in my selection. All right, so this is not gonna to try to do any type of refinement. This is simply going to just add or remove anything that I want from my selection. So I'm just basically painting my selection at this point. Really nice and easy. So you have a few different options, whether you wanna just 
you know, simply paint to remove from your selection, you can do that. Or if you want to do some type of edge refinement, you can do that as well. All right, let's go ahead and bring this back up. Maybe I want to say, hey, let's go ahead and include this. By the way, you can switch between your add and remove by holding alt or option. So in this case, I'm going to hold alt or option to add. And we're just going to make sure we have a nice edge of our shirt. There we go. That looks pretty good. Go ahead and scroll up there and make sure the edge of our shirt looks good. So we can see these automatic tools like Select Mask, they do a great job by default, but oftentimes we have to just kind of come in and help them out a little bit, and that's totally okay. There we go. After all, we know what's our subject, you know, we know the best thing. We just gotta guide the software just a little bit sometimes. All right, up here at the top, let's see the transparency. We have our little area here. This is actually part of the hat. So we're gonna go do our next tool on the list, and this is actually our lasso tool. So let's go to our lasso tool, and I'm just gonna use the plus lasso. There we go, you can hold alt or option to make it a minus, but I'm just gonna go ahead and tell it, hey, let's include this in our selection too. There we go, double click, and you've added that to your selection. So you have all these different selection tools that allow you to add or remove areas from your entire selection. All right. Now at this point, I feel like, hey, we're looking pretty good. Maybe this area, not so great. So let's go ahead and minus this out. We're gonna hold Alt or Option, which allows us to minus this area out. There we go. We're just gonna click there. Now, I think that clicking a few times with this polygonal lasso tool is a really good way to create edges in this tool. There we go, hit Enter, and you're gonna go ahead and remove, remove that. So now we have a nice edge all the way up to there. Let's go ahead and bring our transparency all the way up. And here we can do a little bit more refinement. So we're gonna to go to our Refine Edge tool, which is the second tool on the very bottom. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say, let's refine this edge a little bit, okay? It's gonna look for similar colors to wherever we're painting. And it's going to make sure to include those colors in the edge and remove colors that don't exactly fit. Okay, so anytime you have an edge that just doesn't look that great, this Refine Edge tool is the way to go. And you can see these edges are a little bit weird. So that's why we're going in with the Refine Edge tool. There we go. Now, it's important to keep in mind, you can always add to your selection with this third tool from the very top. There we go. And this is just a hard add, okay? You can right click here and change the hardness of that brush. There we go. And I can just simply add by painting in that finger there. So we're not really having to use many crazy uh, selection tools. Notice I'm not using anything like the pen tool here. I'm literally just painting in these fingers. Now, I also want to re remind you guys that all of the things that I'm doing here, this is all just going to go to a layer mask. And you can refine that layer mask at any time if you want to. So if you don't get it perfect from right here, don't worry about it. It's really not that big of a deal. You're always gonna have your layer mask that you can go in and refine at any point in time. There we go. That's looking pretty good. And we're just gonna continue to scroll around our subject. And at this point, I think we're looking great. All right, all the way up to the hat. This looks good. We have a couple little areas here that I wanna refine. So I recommend getting the majority of your subject cut out and looking good, and then go ahead and click on Refine Hair. So everything looks really good all around, except we have a couple areas on our subject's hair that doesn't look good. Luckily, there's a tool that's built in that's gonna handle exactly this. It's called Refine Hair. We're gonna go up here to the very top where we see Refine Hair, and I'm just gonna click on Refine Hair and <laughs> look what that did. Amazing, right? Just the before and after basically did all the work for me on cutting out my subject's hair. Absolutely incredible and all in all looking really good. Sometimes that tool gets a little bit confused, the refined hair. As you can see, if I had to adjust my transparency, it went and it kind of thought the shirt was part of the hair. Uh, that's totally okay. Still in the same tool, you can just go in here with the third tool from the top. There we go. And I can just say, hey, you know what? This is actually supposed to be part of our selection. So let's go ahead and paint that in and say, no, this is not hair. We do want this to be part of our selection. And there we go. Let's go ahead and paint this in and make sure that's visible there. Fantastic. So as you can see, you can pretty much do all of your selections and all of your layer masking within this one tool. 
All right, that looks really good. And let's go ahead and bring our opacity back up and make sure we got everywhere we wanted to get. Now you can get back to this select and mask dialog at any time, by the way. So if you don't do exactly what you want, no big deal. You can come back here and refine your mask at any point in time. All right, all in all, I think this looks great. Now, sometimes you'll run into the case where your edge is just maybe a little bit too well-defined, like the edge is very sharp. That's when you can go in here to your edge detection. You can change your edge detection and it's going to kind of like change the radius of where it looks for for your edges, especially if it's not cutting the hair out perfectly, you'll want to increase the radius for your edge detection. So let's go up to the hair and show you what this does when we increase the radius for the hair. There we go and bring it back down. It actually looks better lower in this case. Our global refinements, here's where we can actually add some smoothing to the edge. Let's take a look at this edge here. We can add some feathering, which softens the edge up a little bit, and then add some contrast, which is gonna make that a nice firm edge. And then you can shift your edge in or out if you have any feathering or any fringing in your image. Sometimes when you cut someone out, let's say they're on a light colored background, you'll see like a really light border, just a thin border around your subject. That's where shifting your edge in just a little bit can come in handy. But I do wanna say that if you shift your edge in and out, it will affect your hair, okay? So we're just gonna bring all that back to zero and that's gonna make sure that the hair looks a little bit better. You can do this in multiple stages. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll make one selected mask just for the hair, and then I'll do one for the body. That way I can get a nice smooth selection, bring the edge in a little bit, and then I can refine the hair later. All you have to do is go back in the tool and hit refine hair again, and you're good to go. Now let's go ahead and close that down. Last part, if they are on a complicated background and you wanna put them, let's say on a pure white background, decontaminate colors can be helpful. Basically what this will do is it's going to extend out the colors of your subject. So let's just show you what this does if I bring my transparency down. So decontaminate colors here, you can see it's kind of just extending the colors of my subject's hair, for instance. Like it's making more of the selection black. It's actually changing the image itself, changing it to include more black areas around the hair. And this is gonna help you with fringing around hair. Like if the hair looks like it's got white edges um, because it's bringing in some of the background, or in this case, some blue edges, blue edges, decontaminate colors can work really well. But if you're not having that in, uh, issue, I recommend keeping this unchecked. All right, and then last here at the bottom, we can output this to whatever we want. In this case, I'm just gonna output this to a layer mask on my current layer, because I'm on my background layer. All right. Let's go ahead and hit OK and see what this looks like. It's basically exactly what we just saw in the onion skin of our image. I'm gonna go ahead and create a solid color fill layer here. Let's just go all the way to white and put that right behind our subject. And we can see our subject is very well cut out on a white background. Remember, a couple little areas that it didn't get exactly right, that's not a big deal. We just click right here on our layer mask, go back down to select and select and mask, and we just do it again. Let's bring our transparency all the way up here. And then we want to use the third tool from the top. Hold Alt or Option, and I'm just going to minus this out, OK? Now, you can do this by just painting black on your layer mask directly. So if you don't want to come back into this tool, that's totally OK. But if this tool makes sense for you and you're like, cool, select and mask, I'm just going to use that from now on, you can do all of your selecting in all of your layer masking right here in this one tool. So we're just going to kind of come in. Here, I'm able to refine this edge because the edge doesn't look that great. So we're gonna to go to the Refine Edge tool, which is the second from the top. There we go. And we're just gonna kind of paint this in a little bit. Make sure that looks a little bit better. There we go. It's looking really, really nice. Let's go up here to the hair. Make sure we refine the edge around the hair. So you can see how we did our first round. And then when we need to make a couple little changes, it's not a big deal at all to come back and work on this again. So select and mask, you can continue to use over and over. It's not like you gotta get it perfect and then be done with it. There we go. Let's go ahead and just minus a couple of these areas out. This is a little bit, there we go. A little bit weird right there. Fantastic. Obviously there are a ton of advanced tools and techniques for cutting out things like hair. Uh, we actually have tutorials on Flurm just for cutting out hair. We'll link to those 
in the description right down below because hair is relatively tricky. But in terms of a pretty quick job, this tool does a great job. Now let's go ahead and take a look right here where it says decontaminate colors. Let's see what that does. So if we hit decontaminate colors, you can see it just gets rid of like the blue and the orange fringing around here. So if I uncheck that, you can still see the orange and the blue. It basically takes the colors of the selection and extends them out a little bit, okay? So let's go ahead and refine this edge a little bit here. There we go. And with this decontaminate colors, it's just gonna make black hair there. All right, let's refine this edge here a little bit more too, just with my refine edge tool, second from the top. It's gonna process this again and then re run decontaminate colors. Eh, it's not perfect here, but that's okay. We're just gonna output this to a new layer with a layer mask, that looks okay. And then if I hold Alt or Option and take a look at my layer mask, this is what the layer mask looks like with the hair. All we have to do here is hit B for the brush tool. We're just gonna paint black on my layer mask we're gonna change our mode to overlay, okay? And this is just going to remove those lighter areas. There we go. I'm changing the mode of my brush tool, okay? To overlay, and this is just gonna help remove some of those background elements and only have my hair show up. There we go. Perfect, so just a little bit, and then let's just change that right back to normal. There we go. We're just gonna paint with white, make sure things like our glasses are fully visible. Fantastic. And overall, I gotta say, pretty happy with that layer mask from top all the way to bottom. Let's take a look at this and we can see the fringing has been removed from our hair. If you need to come back in here, a little bit more overlay. There we go. Just paint black right over there. It's gonna remove any type of that background that's still a little bit visible. And there we go. Let's go ahead and hit shift. There's our before image. Well, you can see because we hit that decontaminate colors, this is literally what it does. It'll extend the colors of your image, but it can make for a nicer cutout. Let's take a look at our overall before and after. So the next time you need to cut out your subject, go to select and mask, hit select subject. Go ahead and do your little refinements, hit refine hair at the end. And don't forget, you can always get back in there and change your layer mask at any time. This is non-destructive editing. It's gonna help you cut out your subjects in Photoshop. You can get this sample image and this PSD for free on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. Thanks again, I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone. I'm sweating here. Cause it is hot in Puerto Vallarta. It is so hot in Puerto Vallarta. Literally everyone told me it would be hot here. And they were right. It is in fact hot in Puerto Vallarta.